All right. All right, so we're going to do a uh, master problem. Let's call this um, 10 microfarads and 20 microfarads and uh, 12 microfarads. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Should have tried to zoom in on it. No, I mean, hopefully you can see it. Okay, so um, if we're if we're combining resistors or capacitors, we have the same methodology. We just have slightly different, uh, slightly different approaches. So, um, what's our first step in solving a circuit problem? Okay, identify what's in series and what's in parallel. So, series is end to end, no branches. Are there any? Any junctions between capacitors that are end to end, no branches? No. No. Okay. End to end branch. End to end branch. Okay, so there's nothing here that's in series. How about in parallel? Both ends are connected together with metal. Yes. Yes. Okay, C2 and 3, and they're actually drawn in parallel. But just because something looks like it's in parallel doesn't mean it is, and just because something doesn't look like it's parallel doesn't mean it isn't. Okay. So C2 and C3 are in parallel, so we would combine those. Okay, so we would combine C2 and 3. How do we combine capacitors? Okay. Capacitors that are in parallel, do they add or do they want do the one over one over thing? They add. They add, very good. So um, C23 equals C2 plus C3. That's 20 plus 12 is 32 microfarads. Okay. Now that we've done step one, we do it again. Are there any capacitors in series? Yeah, C1 and C23 are now in series. Are they in parallel? No, why not? Because there's a battery in between this, these ends. Okay. Battery between these ends. So now we can combine the two into the final one. And how do I calculate the value of capacitor 1, 2, 3? 1 over. It's the 1 over 1 over equation. So okay. And if there are two items, then you can turn that into the product over the sum. If there's more than two, you cannot do that. Could somebody calculate what this is? That's 7.6. 7.6 microfarads. Okay, now, what is our rule of thumb for checking on tests? Less than the lowest one that would happen. It has to be less than the smallest one, and so it has to be more than one half of the smallest one. Okay. And this applies for resistors and in uh, capacitors. Okay, so the smallest one is uh, 10 microfarads. We have 10 microfarads here. <coughs> and 32, we know that it has to be less than 10, which it is, and we know that it has to be greater than half of 10, which is 5. So this, maybe you're wrong, but you're wrong in the right direction. Okay, so it's a great, great sanity check. One of the reasons students goof up, they, if they're doing this thing, they forget this final one over thing and they get a value like somewhere back. Okay. 
So <coughs> this, this gives you a range for solutions, yes. What does it say half the smallest is greater than or is less than C? So the equivalent of these two components, and this is only when it's two, the equivalent of these two has to be less than the smallest one and greater than half of the smallest one. Okay, and that's true for resistors too. Okay, now we're at a point where we've got the circuit simplified as far as we can go. We start calculating. So we combine going this way, we're going to calculate going this way. Or on a test, usually you have to combine going down, and you calculate coming back up. Okay? So now we have the simplest uh, situation. I know the voltage across the capacitor. I know the capacitance. What don't I know? We, we normally don't think of current, but we think of what? Charge. Charge. Okay. Um, what happens here is that the battery will fill up the capacitor with charge and then it will stop. So while it's filling, there is current. But once it's full, there is no current. Once this has 25 volts across it, then there's no reason for current to flow one way or another. It's at equilibrium. The pool filled the, the lake filled the pool. There's no reason for water to flow between the lake and the pool. Okay. So there is current initially, but then very, very soon, we'll say instantly, then it's filled up and you have no current. Okay. But the capacitor is filled with charge. The pool has water. And what, uh, what equation dictates or, or describes the behavior of a capacitor? C equals Q. C equals QV, Q equals CV, Q equals CV, right? Thank you. I think. I can never remember this one. All right. So in this, what is the value of Q then? Can you calculate that for me? The amount of charge that comes out of the power supply goes into the capacitor. So this plate will have that much positive charge on top, that much negative charge on the bottom. Okay. That's the capital Q. Okay. That separation of charge, charge wants to be together and be neutral, right? By separating that charge, we, we actually create the voltage across the plates in the capacitor. The capacitance is a measure of how big the pool is. Okay. The voltage is the level of the pool. And I was a little sloppy, I should do this. Delta V. Delta V is because our voltage, we always use delta V because it's the difference in voltage between two things. So 
This is how much water went into a pool of this size to make the water level a certain height. That's kind of what we're saying. So if we think of charge as water, flowing charge as current, the size of the pool or a measure of the size of the pool as the capacitance, and the voltage as the level, the height of the pool. That's our that's our analogy. Okay. So any questions to here? Okay, now we're going to take what we know here and work backwards to come up with things we know here. Okay, so what, I know the voltage here, I know the, the capacitance here and here. What don't I know? Or what else do I know? The total charge. Now, I have a charge here. How does that relate to these two capacitors? The charge is the same in series. The charge is the same in series, just like the current is the same when they're in series. So the charge is the same on C1 as it is on C23. Okay. Charge is different when they go in parallel. Okay. This is a little not obvious with our water, <laughs> water thing. Okay, so that means each of these has the same Q. So what don't I know in this picture? The voltage across each capacitor. So I need to find V1 and delta V23. And if I take C equals Q delta V, then that equals Q over C and Q over C23. <coughs> Can this half of the room calculate the bottom, this half calculate the top? So when I pull them apart in parallel, they both have six volts across them. Okay. So this equals okay. And 
This is because they're parallel. All right. Questions so far? Is it kind of coming back? <coughs> So, I need to find the charge here, so I use Q equals C delta V. And Q3 equals C3 delta V. So, so I've got uh, 20 microfarads times 6 would be 120 microcoulombs. 12 microfarads times 6 would be 72 microcoulombs. And they should add up to 190. A little off, but again, if we were keeping track of all the digits, that would work out. Does this make sense? Any questions? Essence? With resistors, um, I know we're not adding like in series and parallel and kind of um, But when we're talking about um, what we were talking about, like things having the same charge or the same voltage, is that, I can't remember, is that the same between resistors and Yeah, this and this are the same. Same current, so same voltage. That's true for anything. Okay. But how you combine them is swap. So yeah. resistors in series add, resistors in parallel, it's the one over one over thing. Yeah. Capacitors in parallel add, capacitors in series are the one over one over thing. Yeah. Okay. But like, yeah, so then when, but either way, capacitors or resistors, when they're in parallel, they have the same voltage. Yes. Okay. And the only difference between problems with resistors is this would be V equals IR instead of Q equals CV. That, other than that, you know, every technique you used here, do the same thing. Gabriel? Um, would a circuit with both resistors and capacitors on it be considered too difficult for this exam? It shouldn't be, but yes, it would be. Okay. It would freak you out be. something <laughs> fierce. Right? You're not going to be Okay. Well, not that one. I'll speak you out other ways. Okay. All right. Any last minute questions on this? So then you won't. What's that? Oh, no. Okay. Can you hit the re record button? We'll stop that.